Hello, my name is Morgan Gray, and welcome back to the Afrocentric Podcast. Stom, you finessed this one. I'm on this bitch neck more than bitty bees. On GLDD, I'm in BDD. Favorite baby daddy couldn't fuck with me off EDD. Addicted to dick, she got ADD. I ain't never ever picked a bitch that ain't picked me. Control your baby, cause I'm slipping in edge control. My bitch getting hot, wait for me to the bed get cold. I just wanna see how much dick her head can hold. Bitch, you see DD. Come on, open your mouth. I still fuck with Tatiana, we busting it down. She want me to be the dad, but I don't know her child. I'm in and out of bitch life, I'm not Oscar proud. Till the bitch get respectful, I'm so disrespectful. Bird head bitch, how you don't know what's best for I'm only getting bread, I ain't worried about the vegetables wow. Bitch is fucking me and I ain't even said unsexual Better watch your tone, take the dub and kiss the elbow Do you think he went to heaven? Yeah, I you, bitch, hell no hell You know no. I've been faithful to being unfaithful yeah. Dumb ass bitch, been full since April I'm on this bitch neck more than bitty bees On GLDD, I've been BDD Fake baby daddy couldn't fuck with me off EDD Addicted to dick, she got ADD I ain't never ever picked a bitch that ain't picked me Control your baby cause I'm slicker than edge control my bitch getting hot, wait for me to the bed get cold. I just wanna see. We don't funk with racism. We don't funk with people who don't support the LGBTQ plus community. And baby, we damn sure don't funk with anybody who don't love a beautiful black queen, baby. You see this case. When they go low. I go low oh. You don't let nobody act black and then go home and be white. I got two pistols and a pit bull. Me. That's all I need. It only takes a little bit of white brainwash to activate the cool chip in the average Negro. You think Harriet Tubman was walking around with a fucking nice shiny fucking dress on with a fucking crown on her head when she was taking slaves? To freedom! And a lot of white folk have demonstrated eloquently that they don't have no sense and we are back with the afrocentric podcast the name of this episode is called there is peace in the segregated dating pool and it is featuring chris mayberry tell the people what's up chris what's going on child good people going on right yes um I'm excited to have this conversation with you. I'm excited to give it to you. <laughs> I want to say before we get started, there are a thousand niggas in the world right now with a microphone on the internet talking about relationships, but I wanted to say that this is not your average dating relationship episode right here. This is going to be different. We're going to be looking at love, black love relationships as a modern black person through the lens of different generations. We're also going to be talking and trying to meet in the middle ground in between um, cisgender, uh, cisgender heterosexual relationships as well as talking through the differences between these black gender couples. So I'm excited. We're going to be talking about the dating stage situationships and we're gonna be trying to nah you think they're gonna be nervous i think they're gonna be nervous about all of it because you know i want to i decide i want to make these motherfuckers face the music today go ahead and tell people a little bit about yourself before we jump into the conversation my name chris mayberry from little old can mississippi 39046 819 you ever know how they're going graduated from can have school I did not go to college, but I had thoughts about it. <laughs> it was a good thought. I'm so sorry, mom. I'm so sorry. I got me a job when I graduated. I'm still there now. I'm a lawyer now. I'm a real lawyer. So I stayed down. So I'm trying to come up. That's it. It's all about to me. Chris has a podcast. He's just started. Go ahead and tell the people. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of forget about my own podcast. Mayberry TV is his name. But right now. Where can we find it? Find me on YouTube right now. Right now, follow me on all social media platforms, Chris Dot Mayberry. And what do y'all usually talk about? I'm talking about everything. I'm on everything. On everything. Every subject. Whoever, I did go off the vibe. Whoever come over to the, whoever I invite, mm-hmm. you go off the vibe, whatever. You don't hit every. Every time you believe in God, do you believe, uh, do this? Do you do that? Yeah. You know everything. Well, I love that. And I know that niggas love to support other niggas. Come so on now, yep. <laughs> we're going to go ahead. We're going to get into it. Hopefully, we can inspire some motherfuckers to act right. Come on. All right. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Damn, damn, damn! Yo, tell me with this. 
All right, Chris. So I have started a icebreaker for my podcast. The name of this game is called Fight, Mary Kill, African American Edition. Okay, then go talk to. Me. Okay, so this game is a twist on the classic game Fuck, Mary Kill, and what I'm gonna do is provide you with a list of African American household names, and you're gonna have to choose between fighting them motherfuckers. Whether you're going to marry the motherfucker or you're going to kill the motherfucker, okay? Okay, I'm ready for these motherfuckers. Okay, so your list today is going to be Christian Rock, T-Pain, and Six Red. Fight, marry, kill. We're going to fight T-Pain for sure. Why are we fighting? What that nigga do to you? He ain't did nothing, but he need to come back to, you know, his old music. He need, his music really came up for his time. Oh. So I'm really going to fight him back there. He really came out too early. Oh, you going to fight him? Because so he came he too came, early. He came a little bit too early. <laughs> he would have came right about now. His music now. Uh-huh. It would be right on in. See, but his music now is trash. You know what? From Change the my mind. What? I'm going to fight Chris Sean. Oh, you bold. Yeah. You got a death I, wish. To be able yeah. to change them. You don't want to be on this they earth could. no more. She makes the stupid decisions. And she got stupid hands. She, hello, I got stupid hands too. No. Let's do it. No, you got but I ain't gonna hit no woman though. I ain't gonna hit her. I ain't gonna beat her. I'm gonna send her for her away. Oh, okay. Cause she pregnant as fuck too. But she need to be beat up. No, she don't. She, Christian Rock is a nice young woman. She is a saint of God. Huh? And Christian is finna be a mother. And she getting her life together. And she we did. are uplifting her in prayer over here at the Afrocentric Podcast. Okay. I ain't gonna say that she, uh, real I don't know. But, uh, she, I ain't gonna say it's too late, but she for been got her act together with this guy. No, she ain't. That girl. That man been treating her like she, crap. Now, he, come on now. He is a manipulative, narcissistic man. So that's that why he. Simple. No, that makes her confused. She is in a whirlwind. That nigga got her twisting and twirling. She don't know whether she gonna wind her ass or scratch her watch. She don't know what she got going on. <laughs> so she just kind of she getting undizzy right now. She just not getting stable. Mm-hmm. But I mean, she making about thirty thousand a week. That's a, that was up, but your man. She getting her mind right, ain't that what? Um, that's what Young Thug said. Got my mind right now. I run these streets. He, 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 um, where God allowed him to be. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> Okay, then I got you. So you were gonna fight for sure? I'm right? fighting. I'm still gonna fight her. Okay, so who who you marrying? Sexy Red? Yeah, we love, we stand for sexy. Sexy, sexy Red, she all right, man, she all right. What you mean she all right? We stand for sexy. But she all right with me. You gonna, you gonna scratch it? She a little bit too much You me. gonna stretch it? You gonna scratch it? I'm gonna scratch it. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to get my coochie stretched. I'm trying to get my coochie stretched mm-hmm. and eat a nigga ass. Eat a nigga ass. We be eating niggas ass today in London. Period. Baby. Hey, yeah. yeah, most definitely. That's beautiful. And, uh, you gonna kill T-Pain. We gonna kill. Yeah, that sound. He looked like he a bleed chocolate milk. Anyway. Like, What's the matter? <laughs> yeah. He sure got real chunk of that. Yeah, like in the mid section. He can he play. Good. He can play a great black Santa Claus. He would look right in a red suit. The bloods Perfect. would love him. Perfect. Oh, that's nice. For real. What? Well, thank you so much for playing this game with me, Chris. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. Yeah. You didn't put it in it, I agree with that 100% too, right? But whether or not, if you want that child or not, she can still make that decision. It's only if up to her. you don't put a seed in her, nothing else happens. And no woman can make you put a seed in her. So the original act was it, the responsibility of a man. True. I mean, it's All right. so did, did black men willingly leave the household or was it the system that was it was systemic by? right so how if we if, if we giving them grace for them having to do it without us but it wasn't our fault how but, are we not getting that same grace and that same respect i'm gonna tell you why, why? i'm gonna tell you why because black men as the leaders of the community now uh, we can't be leaders here's the here's the question we gotta make that? here's the here's the question because the argument y'all make yeah feeds into the feminist agenda Okay. It's mm-hmm. an argument that says, I don't want the responsibility. I'm a leader. I don't want to fix shit. Yeah. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to fall back and let her run everything. That's what the feminists tell. They say, look at them, making excuses for why they can't be better men, making excuses for why they can't make better men. You understand? Mm. Your argument feeds the feminist narrative. That's, and not, it's dangerous. that's not what we're making that's excuses not, for. We're not, I'm we, saying I am the better man, but yeah. I shouldn't be held responsible because you wanted to choose a Pookie and a Ray Ray. That's not me. I work too hard in my life. I'm going to go back life. to what I said. Pookie and Ray Ray shouldn't exist. 
And the only reason why Pico Pico and Ray Ray exist because we're not in the community making those boys the men they need to be. Do you All see right. that? And, she don't uh, get a Pookie if you didn't allow a Pookie. But she right. got an Eli. She ain't come to Eli. She went to Pookie. And that's what we're trying to <laughs> she say. She wouldn't have I had a Pookie too, if we I didn't allow one. I worked too hard in my life. Right. She wouldn't have had but, a Pookie if we didn't but, allow one. But Dr. Umar, we men uh, supposed uh, to make the braids the boys. Right, right. We, right as as men, we as men is holding other men accountable for, for the same thing that you're talking what, about what, right what, now. What, what are we doing for the young brothers in the street? So What you mean? Mentoring them? Now I mean? He's a great father. Mm-hmm. I ain't my, my talking about that's individual. I, that's good. Uh -huh. But that's individualism. Yeah. What are we doing collectively as men mm -hmm. to change the trajectory for black boys in the streets right now? I, I Nothing. We're, we're being but a voice. talking shit. Yeah. I mean, you could take it's it. It's not that. going to get better mm -hmm. unless we put hands on deck. The reason the athletes and the rappers are the role models mm -hmm. is the professional black men moved out the hood. Where did Dennis at? He ain't in the black community mm -hmm. no more. Mm-hmm. Where the lawyer at? Where the business owner at? Where right. your city council person at? We abandon we know black boys and then we blame black men for poor choices in mates that they should not even have to make if we did a better job raising our boys the right way. At the end of the day, if I'm going to call myself a man, mm. the ultimate responsibility for reconstruction of the black community rests with me. Mm. Yes, they have a role. Mm. Yes, they have responsibility. Mm -hmm. But as a man, as a leader... To say I can't fix this shit unless she changes, that's not the definition of a man. I, I don't anymore. see. Yeah. I think we're we're, not, we're on two different accords. Like, yeah. I don't think we're saying that. What I'm saying is I am I'm capable of being that leader, that provider. I've worked hard in my life. You get what I'm saying? I should not have to. You still going I, back I to individual? But I only feel like we tell black men that we have to now deal with masculine women, women with children. Why by is other she masculine? Because she's got, had to raise the kids alone, not one woman, so brother, tell me, a I, whole I, community. So you mean to tell me I, the only woman I could look forward in my life is a masculine woman that has kids by no, other men? No, That's what I have to no, look forward to? But I'm see? telling you, mm. mistakes made by black men mm. systemically mm -hmm. gave rise to the conditions that allowed her to be masculine and made her end up with a man that you consider to be less than what he should be. And I'm telling you, black men are responsible for her being masculine because we have not helped her raise them children. I, I am and not. when I say help them raise them children, I don't mean you as the stepdad. No, yeah, yeah, I, I mean you yeah, yeah. as an active member Definitely. in the community yes. where we go to every single parent black mother and say, how many sons you got to? How many sons you got to? Well, guess what? That's your son's big brother. That's your son's big brother. He taking them to school. He doing the homework. He going to spend a couple hours with him every Saturday. He got his own kids too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he going to make time for you. She got masculine because she had to become masculine in order to deal with the rape, the abuse, the domestic violence, the, the disappointments that men had in her life, and also raising those kids and have to take care of herself all at the same time. The black woman has been the be all in all in our community for half of a century. And now we want to turn around and say because she didn't do it perfectly enough or remain feminine enough when she had to absorb our responsibilities plus her own. That's insensitive and disingenuous. I don't. I don't yeah, believe. So. Yeah, I can't. I mean, agree. I guess I, I do understand. I, what, I understand what you're saying. I'm not taking you nothing have back yet from that. To tell me something that we've done systemically to combat that. Because uh, you keep saying are, me and her. I don't care about me are, and her. Are, but there's plenty. Women of, and men. Mm -hmm. Women and men as a group in right. the community. You understand? Right. We gave birth to that. You see? So you say she had a couple kids already because she got she met men. She probably thought they was good. Some of them. They she left knew they, her. She knew they wasn't good. You don't know that, bro. She knew they wasn't good. You're bro. making you know assumptions saying? about her. Would you make the same assumption if she was a white woman? Yes, I would. Yeah. So you yeah. said. No, 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 come on, man. Nah. 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 Come on. Listen, listen, woman accountable. So you said. Listen, on, I, I, like I said, I, I feel like as a black we man. We don't hold them all accountable because black men date outside their race more than every other man put together. I said we. Y'all three. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I but can't even, disprove even, that because I don't know you personally. Even that, yeah. but if we look at the numbers, black men marry black women at an 80, 87 percent rate, where black women marry outside of their race, um, or they they marry outside of, at a ninety two percent. Black women that's do not. No, no, no. You're that's wrong. Percentages of you're wrong. That's not that much. Black women do not marry out the race more than black men. That's I'm not wrong. saying that, but the, the percentages black ain't that women, far off. That's black what I'm women have one of the highest fastest growing interracial marriage rates, mm -hmm. but her interracial marriage rate pales in comparison to what black men have been doing interracially for how has dating and relationship changed and adapted throughout the past four generations i would say from like our generation right now we on a social media area mm. era, I say era, era. <laughs> and like before that before that social media 
I say we was on a, a drug area. The, the drug just came out. I don't know. Well, you know, realistic. No, you're not tripping. Like 80s, in the, the, the 80s, 80s mm-hmm. in the 90s. Then I say like 2000s. They was leaning yeah, and cracked man, out. Now we on social media. I say, but we also in the middle of a hurt pandemic too. Hello? What, they dying off this stuff and they still ain't doing it. What's wrong with them? They itching and not. Stop itching in here. Don't do all that in here. Go with the rest of the med heads and itch. No itching here. All right. No dope fiend moves in my court. No nod and no itch. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Hey, man, don't do this stuff, man. You see somebody else have something happen to somebody else. Why are we going to do That's what they do. Common sense. I'm all about common sense. Oh, it's not too common. I don't know if you knew that. It ain't. It really ain't. It ain't for real. Okay, before the drug, we had, uh, before the drug, we had, uh, the way the, the, the slavery. You know what I'm saying? Slavery, through social media. We, we, with the black people, we just been fighting a lot of stuff, a lot of temptation. My God. We, it's hard out here for It's hard out here for him. Social media, it, it's supposed to make it better, but it really works, but you don't know who's behind it. That's a good point. So let's let's jump back to the generations, okay? So we have the first generation of people who arrived in America. Those were the enslaved people. Right. Then after that, you have the generation of people who ended up becoming sharecroppers. It was right after they was liberated. And, you know, that's a generation of people. Then you got the motherfuckers who went through the civil rights period, black power movement, that's 1970s. Then we saw a shift in dating and relationships when we got into, from the 1970s to the 1990s. That was when we saw the rise of incarceration rates. We saw the rise of um, motherhoods, mothers who raised households um, and no men were allowed. And now we see this new urban generation of dating that is influenced by music, by drugs, um, and by violence. Okay, so I want to say that throughout enslavement and then throughout the sharecropping period, like the new Jim Crow, all the way up to the civil rights movement, niggas was married. That's right. Is it? The niggas ain't getting married now. No, niggas is not getting married now. Well, then, it was such of a thing. I would say this. After emancipation, after we were free, niggas. But niggas, I mean nigga people. Oh Lord. Black men did leave black households. Now they were a lot of people were getting married. They had high marriage rates, but before they had allowed divorces, black men would leave their families and they would venture up north, especially when they started allowing black men to get married outside of their race. When they um did Love in versus Virginia, and they said let it snow all over the United States, and then all the niggas could give it to cracker bitches. So yeah, so. so that is when you start seeing black men venturing all outside of like black relationships. And then you see the crack epidemic, you see niggas going to jail, then you start seeing the rise in single motherhood in black households. I hate it, I hate it. And you see the transition of black mindsets on the demonization of the black woman within relationships. These are my thoughts. Yeah. I just hate for the single mother family. I hate it. What? Niggas don't do right. I'm so sick of niggas. But I ain't gonna say always the nigga problem. It's a female too. But just, I just hate when people grow up as a saint because you, you miss out on a lot. I grew up in a two parent home, so and my girl right now she grew up in a single parent home. Now I see so much of single parent homes. Yes, I said she don't know. Mm-hmm. She don't know. The voices are high too. It's too high, bro. They, they gotta, we gotta stop this. That's going down. That you do the right thing. It starts with the mindset first, though. I wouldn't dare want no one to get married if they were still in the same stagnant mindset because it ain't going to do nothing but hurt. Both sides, both men and women, are like, number one, they are pushing, pushing this idea of isolation. You better off by yourself. You don't need no bitches. You don't need Uh-oh, no friends. You need to be by yourself. Mm-hmm. Every single thing, every tarot card reading, every celebrity is like, you better off by yourself. You can't trust nobody. So it's pushing this idea of you're stronger when you're alone. So until people reverse this mindset, we're not going to get nowhere. 
do you know that we were still getting married through slavery, mm -hmm. jumping the broom in secret, mm -hmm. even under punishment of death? We were married during Reconstruction. We were married during civil rights. When do you begin to see the rise of the single parented black female household? 1970. After they killed Dr. King, the United States government said we must neutralize the black power base. And they determined that the black power base was the black family. It was independent black skilled men and women who financed King, financed Mr. Garvey, financed Mr. Muhammad, financed SNCC and CORE, the Freedom Riders in the sit in movement. So they said, if we want to crush the black struggle, we got to crush the black family. So guess what they did in 1970? King dies in 68. In 1970, they came into the black communities and de-industrialized our city centers. In 1970, they started shutting down the factories. Remember, up until the 50s and 60s, you didn't need a college degree to get a decent job. Many of us got grandparents who worked in factories their whole life and lived better lives than we're living now with two and three degrees. They could work in their same neighborhood and everybody worked for the factory. Good retirement, pension, benefits, medical. They started shutting down the factories in 1970 and then they went into the high schools and did what? Started deindustrializing the inner city high schools. Up until 1970, you could graduate from almost any school in New York certified as a plumber, certified as an electrician, certified as a carpenter auto body, brick mason, a welder. They took all those programs out. These are the skills that pays the bills, gentlemen. As long as you have a skill, you can always feed your family. But if all you got is college degrees, you might end up in an unemployment line. Why? Because the, the skills that we learn in college are not necessarily marketable to other black people. I'm a psychologist. Ain't too many black people running around looking for a psychologist to reveal all the skeletons in their closet. Yeah, you so, rather talk to a white Exactly. Person. So they started sending us to college instead of teaching us how to work with our hands. That was the 70s. That was the economic castration of the black male. Now let's go to 1980. The CIA comes in, cocaine import agency. They drop off crack. So now the unemployed black man who has always been a breadwinner, Envy, even in slavery, we were always the breadwinner. Up until 1970, now the crack comes. You got a decision. I can sell this crack and try to put some food on the table, or I can smoke it to deal with the fact that I'm no longer economically relevant to the black woman. And drama. let's be clear. The decade of the 70s was the decade of making the black man economically irrelevant to the black woman. We're the only man in America who is out-earned and out-educated by our mates. No other woman in America out-earns and out-educates their mates. And this is not the black woman's problem. I want to be clear. This was systematically done to make us irrelevant to our families. Then the 1990s come Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton crime bill, mm -hmm. three strikes and you out mm -hmm. mandatory minimum wages, the Bill Clinton crime bill. Now all those unemployed black men who got caught smoking crack or selling crack now being sent off to jail. And then they also give us the ADHD so that we could dope the kids up with, with the same medicine that sent the father to jail. So as we're talking about the past four generations, I wanted to talk about some of the things that have changed throughout these past four generations, okay? okay. So the first one is going to be acceptance of uh -huh. interracial dating and marriages. The next one is going to be racial discrimination in health, which is a very interesting topic, and I'll go more in-depthly about it. Mm -hmm. The next one is going to be commitment behavior. The next one is going to be the perception of healthy relationships, gender differences in dating experiences, and intergenerational experiences. Uh -huh. So what I do want to focus on is racial discrimination in health. So a lot of black women throughout these generations have learned that it is not smart for black women to get married that's something that every generation of black women will go back and tell the next black woman don't get married it's not worth it because they're learning that while marriage benefits men it is a disadvantage to women because when we think about how marriage used to be beneficial to women it, it is what it is we weren't able to vote we weren't able to work outside the house if we got divorced we didn't keep the kids like stuff like that like women used marriage as survival because the man was going to take care of her Nowadays, that's not the purpose of marriage anymore. So it's really like, what is the purpose of marriage for women when the, you have to have kids, so you're risking your body to have kids, the man wants you to go 50-50 on the bill, so you got to work and pay bills, and a lot of times women are the primary caregivers too. It's not like the dad is helping out so much with the kids on yeah. average. So it's really like, what is the benefit for women when it comes to marriage nowadays? And it's sad because... 
men get benefited from it so much and women seem to not. Women who are married to men, their partners, the male partners live longer. And then the female partners die at an early age. And then on top of that, most men, they marry because when they get older and they get sick, they expect the women to be there on their side to take care of them until they pass away. But if it was in the inverse, these niggas, when bitches get sick, they leave them on their sick bed. Hello, you ever know that they gone. Why do you think they do that? Uh, a nigga expect so much, so when you really ain't doing it, you gonna he gonna vouch off a little bit, but he ain't got nothing to do with you though. Like he know you sick, he still gonna take care of you or whatever. But you know, it's still he got some wants and needs on his own that he need to get. It don't. This still don't make no sense to me. It, hey, it's a nigga. You not a nigga. It, it, it go, it's a nigga thought. And that's why when <laughs> it's we're, crazy. It is crazy, but that's why this whole the intergenerational experiences, the having the generations, four generations of women being able to tear their experience from generation to generation. Crazy get to reflect on how niggas have fucked them over, how they done got beaten, abused, and how they've always escaped or overcame. And now we have a generation of women because of social media who are able to heed all the advice and to go a step further. Because I don't know if you've talked to any like very like teenage young girls, them bitches know what, what time it is. They ain't playing. They A lot of people, like from my city, a lot of younger girls, they want the older men. They probably be everywhere though, but I know in my city, a lot of high school want people that's 25, 26. Why? Mama already instilled in their head that, hey, you need to be looking for this. You can't find it in high school. You, they looking for money. They look for help instead of love for real nowadays. Do you think that's problematic though? Yes. Why? Reason. It causes a lot of problems. It really is. Because the mama, mama ain't even do right. To be honest, it's so crazy. We need to break a curse somewhere. Well, like the single motherhood, mm -hmm. they stay to pass not this wrong information to their baby. Like they said, they get in a relationship for the wrong reason. The curse is these men staying in these relationships. The men are the problem too. They, I feel like in so many ways, they could be the root problem. Because imagine if that mother had her father in her life. That is a generational curse, yep, but oh, that yep. is the root of it, if you ask me. Okay. I just feel like black men have this history of just like going outside and lingering and leaving and not wanting to commit like real, real bad. Okay, if you know they're from the jump, why would you still have a like a child by this person? Well, I ain't got no kids. Not, <laughs> I'm too. Me neither. Me neither. No kids, no kids. And I really can't. I can't. I don't want to speak to that because a lot of women get trapped. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of some few women have been raped and their children are a product of that. Right, right. A lot of people have been lied to and misdeceived like motherfuckers. These niggas be lying like they life depending on it. Why why you think niggas lie? What because uh, I feel like a lot of men lie because of the patriarchy that they have created for themselves. A lot of the patriarchy was created to hold men to such high standards that they feel inadequate or as if they're not enough, if they don't feel or fit to those standards. So what they do is they lie to make themselves look better and to make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I got you. I say niggas are very simple. They lie just, just to get by that time. Yep, and God don't like ugly. And God don't like ugly. Now. He really don't like no ugly. A man's need to be needed financially is often rooted subconsciously or not in his desire to control. And this is because men have been socialized to focus on what I call the major P's of patriarchy, protection and provision. We've been taught our whole lives that women need protection and provision almost exclusively, if not primarily. And I think this is why many men romanticize the relationships of previous generations, unwilling to acknowledge or admit that times have changed. And even when men do acknowledge that change, they're hearkening back to the good old days when times were different. And this resistance to progressive change is what causes men to feel emasculated. Our male ego is supposed to be brutal from that there's no space for me to be a man because she can pay her own bills if she wanted to that's the problem because we've only placed certain elements inside of masculinity such as being the breadwinner paying bills providing and protecting physically for some reason we as men don't think that the emotional elements is our responsibility we don't place that on the same level of paying bills we don't place that on the same level of breadwinning for some reason everything else falls under that there are many other needs that we can fill emotional and relational needs true companionship needs of encouragement and affirmation the list goes on but these 
easier areas in our lives as men that are typically underdeveloped. Which is why a lot of y'all men find yourselves in a measuring contest with your woman. You want her to dim her light just so you can be brighter than her. And I think y'all compete with women concerning provision because you don't have much else to bring to the table in these relationships. And instead of working on the skills to meet the already present needs, first by listening to women concerning what those needs are, you'd rather complain about women not knowing their place. As if their place or role as women isn't a social construct that doesn't favor their lives, well-being, autonomy, happiness, dreams. We can't be so tethered to the roles that we've been socialized to meet that we render ourselves in effect obsolete. We meet the present needs, not give women the responsibility to create the specific needs that you want to fill in order to make you feel like a man. You feel me? Not a woman's job to make space for a man to be a man it's the man's job to be the man that the woman needs him to be period and when we meet these often more pressing needs that extend beyond the peas of patriarchy, we might discover that we have more pressing needs ourselves that aren't tied to the patriarchal ideals of submission and servitude. Did it ever occur to you that sometimes men need to be carried, men need to be cared for, men need to be loved, men need an emotional connection as well? That we need to be affirmed, understood, believed in, and heard. That perhaps if we led with loving intention, we can lift our partners up as we build ourselves up and vice versa. Relationships and marriage are partnerships not dictatorships. Say what you want to, but my wife and I, we walk side by side, hand in hand. I got her back and she got mine. Our personal wins are wins for each other in the life that we're building together. And depending on the areas of life that we're navigating, we follow each other's lead, leaning into each other's strengths. And this is why partnership is beautiful. It is both just and liberating. And it provides space for both me and my wife to thrive as we cheer each other on. There are many of us finding peace and happiness and partnership by resisting our patriarchal socialization. And I think the results that we've experienced serve as proof that an allegiance to patriarchy harms men too. What are the differences between the talking and dating stages in black relationships? I love this because I was the person doing it. Okay, if I'm talking to you, this how we talking. You just learn each other from a talking, you know what I'm saying? From a talking. Communication. Yeah, okay. That's it. Yeah, communing. Yeah. Don't tell me I don't know how to communicate. I communicate very, very, very well. There you go. We ain't even linked up yet. We just talking, trying to learn each other, da, da, da. Dating is when I'm really just looking for what I'm looking for. Let's say I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for a girlfriend. I'm dating. I got three, four girls I'm dating. I'm trying to see which one I want to be with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's levels too. I just can't. I talk. You know, nowadays they got. I talk to you. You my man. Hey, Santana always. Oh my man, my man, my man, my man. Bitch, your man left you for dead. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought we were dating. The dating area is gone. It's gone. I don't think women will allow a man to date or men. It won't even vice versa the same way. I don't know. Cause I, um, back in my prime, I used to love to date. Me, me too. I, I love to date. They, oh, I love to date. But men like to take me out on dates. Mm -hmm. I think I look expensive. So they like to take me to expensive uh -oh. places. That's there how I is. feel on the inside. Mm -hmm. so, so how would you feel about me telling people that I'm single? Cause we go together. <laughs> 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 I'm not laughing. Yeah. Hold on. It ain't no hold on. We go together now? Real bad. Okay. Whatever you say. I like that. You know what? I like the phrase cotton. You cotton. Okay, we're gonna go back to cotton. Go back that's to some, that, Now that's some nigga shit. Yeah. Because my grandma is from Louisiana. Yeah, you cotton. <laughs> and that word in and of itself is like courting so like that because motherfuckers down here i say specifically in louisiana they have a uh, descendancy in france so like when um two high rank officials in france duke duchess prince lord lady of the house whatever they have high standards so it, when they become of age they court they date mm -hmm. and they try to find the suitor that fits right for them right. so when they came down here that is something that transformed in the black community so we was courting or coating mm -hmm. and it, it, that is so much about this says so much about aabe and um the, the diaspora and language and linguistics but this is another conversation so you see that, and that could mean so many things. If someone says somebody coding, that means that they just fucking right. or they shacking, and that's a shacking. whole now. That's a whole that's nother. A whole nother. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for shacking, Lord. I'm sorry. So if you do not know what shacking means, can you tell them what shacking means? Well, what they told me was shacking means you are. They say you with somebody, y'all live together. Mm -hmm. You cannot stay together if y'all not married. Mm -hmm. See, my granddaddy. Like Louisiana, mm -hmm. from that way to England. No, 
Okay. You can't stay in his house if you ain't married. No. So we so sorry, granddad. Shaking, shaking is funny. So like that that has religious ties to it because you you don't want to be living together if you're not married. Right. So if two individuals live in the house together and they not married and they having sex, they just shacking. They shacking up. Is is it a problem? Yeah. Um, Maybe because back then they didn't have birth control or access to abortion or control over their body. Now, I think that it's kind of more normal. Okay, I got a question. Do you think we should listen to the people from back then to nowadays? Okay, so... On, on, their, on their tip. I think that's an interesting question. So, studies show now that it's actually really irresponsible to live with someone that you've never, like, to marry someone that you never lived with before. That's crazy. Yes, it is. <laughs> right. And um, it, you, you create so much more stress because you don't know what it, living with someone is in close quarters. Mm -hmm. So, you're seeing, like, a lot of people that try to follow that type of mindset and then they live with someone and they're staying with them constantly and realize they don't like the living environment of living with them. Yeah. And then that causes destruction within the relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you 100%. But they, they still trying to instill this in us now. It's hard out here. Nowadays, it takes two. If you're going to live together, it's high here. It is. It's up the wind high. <laughs> it, it's so expensive. Oh, my God. It takes two. Probably three. But uh, I'm trying to make it short, sweet, and simple. Courting is the act of waiting for marriage it is becoming friends really good friends and talking about life but to a bare minimum like very bare minimum hanging out with each other and each other's families you're not by yourself you're always with someone that you know that you trust to hold y'all accountable um it is not based on physical it is more a mental and spiritual relationship that happens. And the point of courting is to get to know each other until the man realizes that he wants to marry you. Um, generally, he will know when he asks you to court you and um, that be that. Um, while dating, on the other hand, is you did date multiple people. You like oh i don't really like this about you and which is understandable but you have to understand like when you're in a marriage you're in it you can't walk away like yeah you can walk out the house but you can't step outside of that and still try to be faithful in your marriage while dating is there is a possible there's a possible that we'll get married there's no long term and there's more hurt within dating because you're sometimes women and men they catch themselves doing wife or husband things on a boyfriend girlfriend salary so courting helps minimize all the emotional tactics that one will experience and then in the book chapter three it does talk about how if you are in a relationship currently and you're currently dating try to switch that to courting talk to your partner about it and see how that goes because you can do it um i can even share my own personal experience i'm in the process of doing it so yeah um there's literally minimal accountability where courting is just like it's set it's structured the book is really good so i think it's funny that you said it because um as i was talking about in a couple episodes ago like up north there's a state that's trying to force people they say that you can't live together unless you're married Mm. Mm -hmm. What state is this? Um, it's some northern like Minnesota, South Dakota oh, type of town. That way. Nah, that's way. that's not nigga land. It's not nigga. <laughs> no way, not at all. <laughs> nigga would die there. Yes, they will. <laughs> They'll go to jail at the very least. For real. So that has so much to do with religiosity. That has the influence. It shows you the separate, the failed separation between church and state, mm -hmm. and then it shows you the effects of religion on the black community. But I feel like there was a form of protection back then, because you know back then grandmama had nine, eight children. She had about thirteen, twelve children. So that is a way to keep you from having and bearing all them children. And again. Grandpa Joe and um, Mr. Earl and them, they weren't real staying. They had them side families on the side, Come too. Come on, man. So, two, right down the road. Wait, right down the road. Or in the city. 
in the same city. So like that, there was a form of protection. People aren't having as many kids as they once were either, but it don't stop shit because we don't have access to abortion they might get rid of access to birth control pretty soon so did they really get rid of the abortion stuff for real or nigga the state of mississippi is who started it we've been traveling the country covering the battle over abortion rights and we landed here in mississippi this is the state's last abortion clinic it was at the center of the supreme court's case but its days are now numbered in just a matter of days here the state's trigger law will go into effect banning near all abortions in mississippi the clinic's director says she plans to move to new mexico where abortion is now legal but the reality is some women will still not be able to make that journey what i thought but i, I ain't hear no more about it okay so um the state of mississippi was the one who started um the no, abortion yes so it got taken all the way up to the supreme court but essentially every state is responsible for how they feel that the state should um cater to abortion rights so if you live in a more democratic progressive liberal place like california mm -hmm. or arizona they'll be more able to aid with abortion practices and that's where a lot of so hold on let me before i switch so people down here in the south that are more republican more conservative in thought they are stopping it and they're also putting up different types of laws and legislations that are keeping women from being able to travel from about their state to be able to get the abortion and yeah. to throw people in jail now it's also affecting the health care system because a lot of these doctors are leaving a lot of the OBGYNs down in the south are fleeing because they are in light of getting in trouble like they could go to jail possibly and you never you have to choose between life or death and that's not how they were trained mm -hmm. so it's a scary situation so we are losing medical care down here in the south and mississippi already has the highest amount of um maternal deaths out of any other state in america so yes yeah, so like you i personally that's why i have issues right now with wanting to get married or wanting to date because they're also getting rid of um divorce on like like amicable choices like no it's called no fault divorces the conservative assault on individual rights continues let's look at no fault divorce conservative states including texas of course are looking at ending no fault divorce what is it no fault divorce laws allow either party to walk away from an unhappy marriage there's no need to prove abuse, infidelity, or some other fault. All 50 states have some version of it. California was first in 1969. Researchers have said that the rise of no-fault divorce laws have led to decreases of spousal homicide of women as well as female suicide. More than two-thirds of all heterosexual divorces are initiated by women in the United States. Republicans apparently don't like the ability of a woman to simply leave a marriage because she doesn't want to be married anymore. Republicans say they want to support covenant marriage. They also want to extend the period of time in which a divorce may occur to six months after the date of filing. They want the woman to have to stay around longer. In addition to Texas, you have Louisiana and Nebraska. Ending no-fault divorce was also considered the, at the Republican National Convention in 2016. Look for that to come up again. Those who say they want to keep the government out of your personal affairs, I'm not sure they really mean it. They seem perfectly fine to allow the government into your personal affairs when it fits their agenda. What's next? Ending contraception? Requiring that a woman have sex with her husband whenever he wants it? I don't know. So they're getting ready to get rid of that too. And then in Florida, they got rid of what is it called when you get alimony? They're getting rid of they got rid of alimony down in the state of Florida. All right, let's talk about the new Florida alimony law and how it may catch fire in other Republican led states. The measure was called SB 1416, and it's a bill that not even Rick Scott, the former Republican governor, would sign. But DeSantis signed it on June 30th, and it became law on July 1st. It ends permanent alimony. Now, that sounds terrible, and it is terrible for the women of Florida who were counting on having permanent alimony because it's mostly going to affect older women. But there are only seven states in which permanent alimony exists anyway, and those are Connecticut, New Jersey, North Carolina, Oregon, Vermont, and West Virginia. This law caps durational alimony at three years and 
rehabilitative alimony at five years. And as always, alimony is terminated if the receiving spouse gets remarried. Here's the part where it gets a little tricky. This new law also allows a judge to modify prior alimony agreements. And they can modify those based on the age, health, and motivation for retirement of the payer. And it also puts the burden of continuing to prove that you need alimony on the recipient. So even though alimony may have been decided at the time of divorce, it can now be challenged over and over and over again. Now, only about 10% of divorces end in alimony in the first place. You have to be married pretty much more than 20 years for a judge to really seriously consider it. 400,000 people currently across the nation are on alimony, and 98% of them are women. Now, with the abrupt ending of permanent alimony and some of these changes and ability to legally challenge things, older women in Florida are saying this new law is going to absolutely ruin their lives. Yeah. What are we coming to? What are we coming to? Um, A conservative, biblical, Christian, ethnostate. That's... A white supremacy nation. They take a note. They are, and that's why we need to have these conversations, because while niggas going stupid over 50-50, they're more important Uh conversations. Uh-oh, 50-50. Right, we hear that so much. 50-50, 50-50, 50-50, 50-50, 50-50, 50-50. Do what you got to do to do what you got to do. No, I feel like the name of the game really at this point is survival. Hello. Just make it work. Yes. Like... uh, 50-50 work. Because we in our our late 20s, I don't feel... Unless you're doing something you ain't got no business doing, you ain't going to really have no money like talking about. Uh oh. But that's the work for somebody. Okay. So if you get in the house and if y'all have to go 50 50 in order to keep the lights on and keep food on the table, then do it. Who cares about what somebody else has to think? What's called $2,000 I heard. You think I won't pay that by myself? We can you? I can, but I don't, I, I'm not going to do that. Well, I don't, well, you know, I heard there's a lot of bad bitches still living with their mama. Uh oh. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna hate on y'all this time. Yeah, that's me. That's that's me. I'm bad bitches. It's all it's all here, right? <laughs> I'm curious, at what point did you develop that first sense of security and that the work is coming and I just as long as I keep knocking it out, there's gonna be more and there isn't this sort of sense of the rug is going could could still be pulled out. Uh I struggle with that still just because I I think I just have more responsibilities, you know, for my money. So I get nervous like, oh, God, that that movie didn't open. You know, well, what does that mean? Do I am I do I do? Am I going to have enough to, to, to hold everybody up? And, and and everyone's like, it's coming, like, calm down. And I'm trying to find peace in the journey, not using my anxiety and scarcity mindset to be my engine, which is hard. It's weird to say I'm head of household because in this household, we split everything 50-50. But in the other households that each of us have to support, it puts this, there's always this like gorilla on your back that is like, you better work, you better work, you better work. You know, you you gonna sleep in? Mm. You know, somebody might not eat. You go, come on, get away. And it's hard. It's hard to let that go. So I'm working on that. I have one thing to say. You better work, bitch. So for me, I feel like when we're talking about the talking stage, number one, the black community is the only community that does a talking stage. D motherfucking Asian motherfuckers. <laughs> you think they talking? Nope, they get down to penny. Come on now. So, like the talking stage. So, the, I, for me, these is the rules. Now we gon' if you if a nigga need to talk, we can talk for however long the nigga need to have the conversation okay, for. Okay. I feel like a talking stage should not last longer than three months. Okay. Why you think? Why is it? Why the time they long? Because I feel like a man knows what he wants. It don't take me and long to figure out what they what that they like and what they gonna do about it. So I feel like if a nigga really wanted just this just talking now. Right, right, we right. ain't even progressed today <laughs> now. So if it take a nigga three months to decide whether or not he wanna take me on a date, that's that's tough. That nigga don't fuck with me. You're right, you're and right that's what they be that. saying. That these these niggas don't really like women like talking about and they these niggas show us every day how unserious they are. You're right, you're right. So, 
when then we get to the dating stage, we dating, heading into a relationship. We can date, but again, I probably wouldn't put now we I probably do another three months of dating. Now we at half of a year. If by six months you don't know you want to be in a relationship with me, that's six months of time that you can't get back. Okay. But when you're dating here, that just with one person. It's um I'm single until I'm married, sugar. But that's me. <laughs> don't play with you. <laughs> My motto is is don't let your boyfriend stop you from finding your husband. Uh oh. They said that now. They did say that. I believe that because I'm not I'm single until I'm married. Right. I have a boyfriend right now. Mm-hmm. But when I sign paper, when I got to go do my white man paperwork, and they ask me, is you single, separated, married, or divorced? Single in the checkbook. Okay. When they and when I go do my taxes, they said, is you the head of the household? That's me right there. <laughs> so you bring it out in. <laughs> go on I'm not married. So I'm going to put that. So now, okay, now you relationship. Now you is my boyfriend. I feel like. I'm not. I wouldn't necessarily put a time limit on dating to get engaged because it takes time. People be in rough places. Mm-hmm. Now, when it gets to getting like five or six years of you dating a <laughs> motherfucker, you got to know when to count your losses. You got to know when to walk away. But what if y'all good though? Like everything is good, but it just everything that it's everything the is that ain't right. You know what I mean, it's not even about stuff like that. It's always about progression. Yeah. You want to be ready to get married though, mm-hmm. but I really ain't got the funds right now. I but I really like want to marry you though. Everything is going to be on a case by case scenario, and I think that's another problem that we have in this society. We try to take this advice that people give us mm-hmm. and try to fit it into our lives, but our lives are different from everybody else's lives. Mm-hmm. So it's not a monolith. There's no specific set rules that fit for it. You got to understand what's going on in your relationship mm-hmm. i understand motherfuckers broke some motherfuckers ain't making no money i get that i understand mm-hmm. that we are in our 20s motherfuckers ain't making money like that so i wouldn't rush it and you don't even you can even settle like if okay maybe if you want to get married we don't have to have a grand scale wedding with 300 people maybe we can just go to the courthouse and get yeah. married but that's a conversation that, true love, I believe. that is my me my best friend got married at the courthouse true love that's what i'm telling you so like you have to have an understanding but again this is not east St. lawrence i'm not dating no nigga for six seven years mm-hmm. And, and wondering if he's going to marry me or worse, I'm going to propose to that nigga. Uh-oh. You, you think you, you ever do that? No. Why? I, What's wrong with you? Um, my knees ain't strong. You better put a knee pad on. Mm-mm. I feel, if a female proposed to a guy, he ain't got no trouble but to say yes. Yeah. No, he don't. Yes, he do. They said, okay, studies show that there are two types of marriages that work. Mm-hmm. Marriages where the couple equally love each other always work out and the marriages where the man love the woman more than the woman loves the man is marriages that work i feel like if you have to get on one knee to get this nigga attention and he say yes that's a shut up ring i, I don't know i i, I feel uh that's good How, that, that's good that's for y'all right. that, that ain't that's yeah, not what no nigga re- want we That's really, not what no we nigga really want. trying to understand why a female like us so much. So if she get on her knee, she's saying, if everybody else, she want me. Them niggas don't I take love it. you, baby. Okay. I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. <laughs> I'm going to marry you. You're the one for me. Yeah, hello. For real. I ain't trying to hear that shit, though. I'm going to marry you. Okay. So when it come to dating, men say, men say that they want women to shoot their shot they say that they want women to go out of their way to show them how much they care about them. But when it's unwanted attention, men don't take well to it. If that nigga don't want you, it's not going to go well ever. Right. So if I'm coming out the blue, I don't know what this nigga preference is. And I'm in this nigga DM like, oh, damn, daddy, I like it when you like that, daddy. Sure, I like when you like this, daddy. Yeah, yeah, you my bed, daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you're scrambling right and scraping for shit. I like that. I'm trying oh, to get your oh, number, hey. you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm in your DM. He don't like it. No, he not. He not. don't like it, but he might not. He not going to take well to it. Mm-hmm. Like, number one, the men always want bitches to be so feminine and soft and subtle. And if you come at a nigga like that, oh, she too aggressive. It depends on what type of man. You know, everybody got... Oh, no. You, you right. You got... These niggas crazy. Some of them all right. Some of them good. Some of them like that. 
it just you got what I tell my advice to a woman when you're trying to pick a man because I really feel like women should pick. Hey, 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 and when you get done with this thought, I got one for you. Okay, I feel like women should pick men because it it always gonna balance out. A man got to do stuff regardless. A woman ain't gonna do nothing regardless. They say a man got to take it in high hole regardless of how the woman or the baby feel. You know what I'm saying? But when a woman come to a man, he know that she out for me and she gonna stick with me. When I go to you. I don't tell what else you got going on. But that's if he want it. If you, they were saying that's how if you want it. If he don't want it, if he don't want it, it's not it's gonna go that way. And so she need to stop. Yes, but I, let me get back to my thought. Go ahead, my bad, my bad, my bad. So they're saying that we're getting to a point now where it's going to be a, a prize to have a woman as a man, right? It's going to be looked at. I hope not. Yes, like as a search, <laughs> it's going to be considered social cur- um, currency mm-hmm. for a woman to have, for a man to have a woman just because women's standards are so high right now. I don't know what, and who made the, go back to what you said earlier, the this men is, are the, the root of the problem. Yes, the men created that type of patriarchy. They created those standards <laughs> for themselves and now and they the have daddies. to deal with it. Yes. You have to deal with it. So as men, it is your responsibility to break down those social constructs and to create new ones and not to mimic white social patterns, not to mimic white relationship and white mm-hmm. love. You have to create it out of your own love for black love. So they don't. I don't think these men have that type of understanding with them. Mm-hmm. But no, like, it, bitches out here choosing. Hello? I they, mean, but they choose for the wrong. They choose over money over everything right now. MOE right now going on. But when are you going to find true love? Well, I feel like that part of the money is so important for women because it wasn't until the 1970s that women could even have their own a bank account. Mm-hmm. So, like, you need to be feeling financially secure. Yes, you can have love all day, but what is love but if I don't feel trying secure? To work, who ain't trying to work? I say majority of the city girls ain't trying to work. They trying to come up off a nigga. I feel like the perception of that ain't, that's not true. Women, it's more black women that have more degrees than any other race. I know black women that's working two or three jobs. I know women that's starting what? business. What you working two or three jobs for? I was working three jobs. I just ended my second job last month, and I travel all over the state not to get no nigga attention, but because I need my own money. So you got money. people like you. We got other people doing it for other reasons. Love. I feel like my listening audience, the mm-hmm. bitches that's listening to me in the back. Y'all listen to bitches. They they, they them listening bitches. <laughs> they read. This is the reading rainbow of mm-hmm. bitches, nigga okay, bitches. They, okay. They. Okay. They are the ones who is working hard. That's going out here and trying to do right by mother fuckers mm-hmm. now that's all i can say i just don't have you ever heard of um black girl boredom or black girl heartbreak before heartbreak so like you know that when black women get heartbroken or they become extraordinarily bored they will go out and go start another adventure mm-hmm. they will go out and get another degree they'll get another job they'll start their own business pick up different hobbies because we are ambitious by nature now these other the section I'm eight tell you bitches. Right now, I work at a plant, so mm-hmm. I'm on. What you gonna go ahead? On the section section eight bitches. They, well, I, I work with them type of people. They not educated. They don't know no better. That's why I'm trying to help them out. I be trying to get to them right and raw. You gotta get to them. You gotta go ahead and tell them you can't beat around the bush because they come sent. What you say? It ain't coming. It ain't coming. On. It, it ain't them. Coming it's on. not. It don't. So I be at that work cussing them out, telling them, "Hey, that ain't it. Why is your fight with the toxic nigga?" <laughs> You know he talks. That is a good point. And you still, it's the deep. Come on, when are they gonna stop? Remember not too long ago when there was a trend on TikTok of men telling women to pick better men for relationships? Basically saying that one of the main reasons why women were ending up in these toxic relationships is because they weren't picking the right men. Basically putting the blame back on them. And if you don't remember, I'll show you some clips. The reason why you need to choose better men is because we know there are shitty men. <laughs> and someone help me understand why that is so offensive. And then we had a pretty good follow-up on that. Like better men is just another way to gaslight women into taking accountability for the way men behave. How can women pick better men if bad men are so good at pretending to be good ones? So I'm going somewhere with this, and it gets better. Then I stumble upon this video. S okay, I'm is because if you fuck with a real woman... She's going to agree with you. Hey, maybe I shouldn't step outside wearing this, that, this nasty ass that. shit. Let me or... answer that. This is the problem. The real woman is standing too close to the hose, so we don't know the difference. Wait a minute. 
Hold up. Did you just say, I can't tell the difference? Now let me ask you a question. Should you be given a pass on that? Or should we tell you, pick better women for yourself? Hmm, no, I'm gonna keep playing it. It's like right now, right? If you see 10 lions coming down the street, are you gonna try to figure out which lion gonna bite your ass or not? You gonna be like them 10 lions. So unfortunately, the real woman agree with too much shit that these hoes is on, so we don't know the fucking difference. So we had this whole debate on TikTok, basically telling women to take accountability for the men that they're choosing. Not giving a pass to the woman that genuinely couldn't tell the difference. But yet we sit here with all of our pride and confidence saying, you know, we can't tell the difference, so that's on y'all. No, it doesn't work that way. How about this? We just stop making assumptions about people. We stop saying that every person did the same thing for the same exact reason and being so quick to label all of them and place blame. There are always exceptions. There are always outliers. But you just literally stood up for dudes and said, well, you know, we can't tell the difference. Why weren't we saying that for the women? I mean, do you not think that sometimes it's hard to tell? There are some men that I've met that I was like, I didn't know you were like this until you told me. At the end of the day, we need to hold ourselves accountable too. And stop giving us a pass and not giving women that same pass. We can all afford to be a little better, but change first starts with stop being so judgmental and just learn to get to know someone. You never know. What are the upsides and downsides of a situation ship in, a, in dating? First of all, Chris, oh what the fuck is a situation ship? I think a situation ship is when you dealing with somebody that you really don't plan on being with for real, but y'all got the y'all do the things of this type of stuff though. Like the dating, y'all probably just fucking going out low key type stuff. I say a sneaky link is like the new word. Or of what situation so you saying they synonyms they're synonymous Synony to yeah sneaky link a situation I'm gonna sit you ain't gonna tell nobody even situation you, you might nobody. you ain't gonna tell nobody you got a sneaky link either yeah, so you can put them by hand to hand almost I ain't never I ain't had one of them in, in probably about five years yeah, yeah no, because that's some shit that you do when you younger young. but the older folk they, the younger folks see the older folk do it they got to do it that's why I say go back to mama. Mama, big girl at school, but when she got out of school, it's a dude over there with mama. I'm tired of niggas blaming their mama for shit on my soul. On I, my mama. On your mama. On my own it's, birthday, it's a baby. Mama fault. No, it's not because you have it your own. Be the daddy you have your own cortex. You make your right. own motherfucking decisions. Even though you yes. saw your mama doing that shit, you should have saw that shit and learned from it. Don't stop, learn from it. Stop blaming your goddamn mama. They did not learn from it. What you talking about? What's the same okay. stuff? Okay, I'd say for my city, we still got the same exact stuff, like stores, you know, the building be burnt down. They ain't fixed it yet. That's here in Mississippi. Why? Because Mississippi is a Republican state, and Mississippi and these rich Republicans are not what getting back the to money? the city. They putting it in their own pocket. What they doing with the money with their own pocket? Nothing. They just holding it and keeping it. Go back to situationships. Oh, my bad, my bad. I had one way off it. I had my bad. Start talking about infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> city building. Don't forget about dirt. They get on mine. Situationship. Have fun while you, while time, while supplies See, but that's what I that's exactly what I meant in the last section. Like when I said that men know what they want. Men know what they want. They'll see you and be like and they will categorize you within that moment. Okay, she fine. She not fine enough for me to date her. She's not fine enough. Uh oh, you just did it right now. Exactly. She fine, but she ain't fine, fine enough for me to date her. her. I'm gonna take her See, now we talk about their honesty. Now we can talk about the lies. I'm going to be honest. Come on. So now I'm doing my, I'm being honest. Hey, I talk to such and such. What you going to do better? When I feel like a lot of times men use honesty as a way to just be rude and as an excuse See, to get away from this shit. don't do it like that. I, but that's the truth, though. Just because men are honest or they tell people what they're going on, it's like they don't consider the feelings. It's like... That's why we lie. So there's a whole point of lying. So I, I know you're a good girl. I know that girl. She ain't hitting on that, but I know I can tell her anything. I'm, I'm lying to you. I'm going to tell her. How about we just tell 
people the empathetic too. Do you know the difference between empathy and sympathy? Empathy is the ability to be able to feel the emotions of other people. Sympathy is the, just the simple process of understanding it. So if you got hit by a Mack truck today <laughs> and I came to your hospital bed and I said, damn, I sure know that's hurt. That's me sympathizing. Mm -hmm. oh, I know that he in pain. If I Now, if I was empathizing with you, I'd bring you some Bengay, some Epsom salts, some Gatorade, a couple mm -hmm. bandages, you okay, know. Okay. Yeah, like I have you prop your foot up or some shit mm -hmm. because I am feeling how you feel. Just mm -hmm. because someone just gives you a blanket statement, yeah, I'm fucking on her, and I told you that shit from the jump, just because you told her the truth, it does not put in effect of how she gonna feel, how that's gonna affect shit, and you just because you told the truth and you feel like you got off scotch free because you mm -hmm. did what you were supposed to do, but you didn't do the emotional labor behind it. So what her come see come in there be like, okay, I'm well, doing him what, alone. That's what bitch is doing. They don't want it. They they stay there, they stay here. Who I'm months later, you still here. That's them. Everybody like in just the same way. Just like all men don't act like that. All women don't stay. All women ain't gonna stick around. Right. They they, they lie to them women. I'm gonna keep lying to keep I want I know you got potential, but I'm gonna keep lying. Until I just say if everything else. Now, when I get the line and fucking yeah, and hey, shit, I don't want to hear nothing. You and your bitch. That's me and mine. And I'm going <laughs> to hey, take we, care of it just we fine. What they're not getting is it's a genuine choice for women. Like, we are choosing to be alone rather than be badly to company. Like, we have joy, peace, companionship with our friends. We're having a fantastic time. And we would rather be alone than have partners who are not adding to our existence. And I think this is a very interesting point that got touched on by another woman. I just really think that this text thread between me and a guy that I dated for a short amount of time shows us exactly the impasse that we are at right now between the feminine and the masculine in dating. So long story short, she goes out on one good date with a guy and, you know, uh, he's like, well, what are you looking for? And she says, I want a relationship. And he, you know, uses all this word salad. You can read it right here. But long story short, he's looking for fun and good times. He's looking to hit it and quit it with no responsibility. And she says, no, that's friends with benefits. I don't want friends with benefits. And that was actually her terminology. She said, uh, classified what he was looking for as friends with benefits. To me, he's looking for a one-sided relationship. I think of having solid companionship without all the stress and obligation that normal relationships have. In other words, he wants you to do all the labor. So what men are saying in this time frame is we miss the labor you were doing. Please come back and do that part. But we don't want to be obligated to you in any kind of way. We don't want to have to improve your life. We don't want to be a companion to you. We don't want you to have expectations of us. We don't want to have to actually contribute anything to the scenario. But the part where you were doing labor domestic and physical where you were you know breaking us off a little sweet gushy gushy listening to all our problems improving our lives making our lunches scratching our backs yeah do that part but i don't want to do the part where i have to add anything to your life i don't want any responsibility for you financial or otherwise because we're just friends What's funny to me is how these men always love the word casual. They emphasize casual and fun. Oh, they love no word more than fun. But when you as a woman say, that sounds like a lot of work and it's not going to be fun for me, they get offended. They get outraged. So what happens is after she says, I'm not interested in whatever that is you're describing. I want a real relationship. This man will not leave her alone. Uh, he continues to try to get back in and call it. Oh, let's hang out. So she blocks him and then he finds her on social media media and she's like this is just tiresome i truly believe in what hope peddler termed the great divorce or the relationship realignment you know things are changing right now uh men have realized yesterday's price is not today's price and it's basically up to them whether or not they want to pay it but women have figured out that they are doing just fine by themselves and whether or not men want to change we are changing we are moving in a new direction so if men want to not get left behind they're going to get with the program if not, they will be the ones continuing to ask for companionship and not getting it. Uh, that's it. Like Thank God, he's blessing me, honey. God is blessing all the real bitches across the United States of America and Jamaica and uh, Afghanistan. Uh huh. Did y'all y'all know I like to pray? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Father God, we just want to give you the thanks 
love and the gratitude again. We love you. And we thank you for blessing us with these opportunities that we have, our careers, our children, our wives, our husbands, our boyfriends, and everything that you blessed us with. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless us. And we got the mall, church. Don't say nothing to me, bitch. I told y'all, bitch, I warned y'all. Stop fucking disrespecting me, bitch. In Jesus' name, stop her right now. Put her on her back. For playing with you, Lord. Take her name out the land's book of life. If she playing with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We might be sinning, but mm, we can repent tomorrow. We are also praying for the people of Puerto Rico. We love Puerto Rico. And we are back. Born again sinners. Here in this world amen, to deliver amen. the Lord's mighty word. Come on, come on, pal. Now, for those who have found yourself here at the Afrocentric Church of God in Christ, come on now, pal. I just want to welcome you back to the altar call. <laughs> now, for those who don't know that the altar call is the uh final segment of any podcast Uh episode and i'm just here to let my people know that i'm yet fasting and praying and hoping and seeking and searching and performing god's mighty will on your behalf now today god we just want to thank you for all the participants and all the participants of the alabama boat brawl god Amen. God, you put a ram in the bush, a, Father A bush God. for real. My <laughs> God, today, God, you had our fellow brothers and sisters out there Slam like it. Jacob wrestling with an angel all night long and mm. wouldn't let him go until he blessed his soul, dear God. And God, we just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for leading us into battle and allowing us to have a mighty victory. Hello, hello. Father God, we just thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much for reminding these motherfuckers out here, dear Jesus. Remind them, Lord, remind them. That we are covered under your blood. And we are covered so we cannot fail. Lord, we know that you walked on water, but the other day we saw niggas swimming Women. in water. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. We ain't never seen nothing like this before, Give me them shoes and get walk on water. That's what I'm saying, God. We just want to thank you. If we had thank a thousand you. tongues, God, we couldn't thank, thank you, you enough. Lord. Come on, now. God, thank you so much for say letting it, them get it. bailed out of jail, God. I guess that's why our 10% went yeah, to the Lord. Whole 10%. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Thank you so much. Lord, thank you so much for exposing the races and and, and shining your mighty light on the truth because what's done in the dark will come to the light. We just asking for more brawls like this, Lord, because we are mighty soldiers. Ready, ready. of of the the Lord Lord. and we are putting our fighting gloves on and we are fighting the devil and his wicked army come on now thank you again thank you thank you and we say amen 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 my God we say amen again amen Niggas coming. 
One of them, bow yay high, fresh ass kicks on, and a voice as loud as thunder say, Hey yo ma, let me holla at you. And of course, almost as if his voice was made of glue, I, I stopped dead in my tracks, turn around, and, and finally take, take a good look at him. I mean, he eyed, I guess, but it's still cold. And it's getting late. And I ain't really trying to talk to nobody for real. But he say he ain't trying to hear all that. He's trying to talk to me, see what's up with me. If I got a man, if I got a Facebook, do I stay around here? Can he take me shopping? And I'm like, damn, damn nigga, nigga, I'm just trying to get home. And I already been out here too long, because the cold's starting to feel like it's piercing my skin. And the only thing standing between me and my bus is his thirsty ass. But he still ain't done. He say, he don't really do this too much. But he saw my pretty ass walking. And just knew he had to shoot his shot. Alright, nigga, you can shut up now. Cause I already know everything your unoriginal ass gon' say. Your mouth will become a rapid fire of, for real. I'm just trying to, let me get yo. Give me, give, give me, give me. You nigga so greedy. Know you do this all the time. Know you probably got hella bodies piling up on every street you be on. You don't just shoot your shot. Your body is a walking storm of gunfire, a constant showering of bullets. And now you mad? Cause we ain't trying to get caught up in the crossfire? Oh well, boo hoo, I'm sick of having to do it. He say, there is an art to shooting your shot. Say, even when you miss, if you just keep shooting, you are bound to hit something. Say, what is a black girl's body if not a bull's eye? Me and all my sisters that never made it up to the bus ride home got made into spillage left in the street. Something for niggas to walk over. Something for mamas to warn their babies about. The minute I heard him call me, I stopped, dead in my tracks. I know they will say this is my fault then, that I became a ghost the minute I stopped running, that I was gone the minute I opened my mouth, I am learning. Men love things the same way they smother them. I am learning. Men love things to death.